These engines don't just travel enormous distances, they withstand extreme temperatures. Without any protection, they would self-destruct. Temperatures exceed 3,300 degrees C, or 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. At 6,000 degrees, what would they do? Normal metals would melt. Yeah. Yeah. God. And that is a problem. Engines that melt will never do the job they're supposed to do. It's like trying to make a kettle out of chocolate. And we start with the very definition of uselessness, a chocolate kettle. Chocolate kettles, of course, famously useless because in order to heat water to be hot enough to make a decent cup of tea, well, on the way, you'll melt the kettle. Chocolate is designed to melt in the mouth. In other words, at just below body temperature. So just to prove the point, I shall now try to make a lovely cup of tea. Yeah, clearly already it is having trouble. Yep, its reputation is clearly deserved. Useless. Just as easily as my kettle, at shuttle operating temperatures, even metals would melt like chocolate. For the solution, NASA turned to a 19th century machine that transformed church music. Church organs need a flow of air. Until a little over a hundred years ago, it was pumped by hand. Right, to work. This is the lever, those are the bellows. I pump the lever, it puts air into the system. And there you have it, the original Hammond organ. Sorry, couldn't resist it. Inevitably, after a time, along came a machine to replace, well, me, the person who pumps the organ. It was an internal combustion engine, still in its infancy in the 1880s. The one first used to pump air into church organs also introduced an invention that would help NASA. And it would have been a machine very much like this one that replaced me driving the bellows to provide air for the organ. It's a single cylinder internal combustion engine, but it had a problem, like all internal combustion engines, and the clue is in the name, internal combustion. It's an explosion going on inside it, here. And that makes the engine hot, dangerously hot. So, it's jacketed with water. There's a water jacket around it, another cylinder full of water to cool. Cold water is constantly circulating round the hot engine, removing the heat. This was the first cooling system for an internal combustion engine. It's a primitive version of what NASA uses on the shuttle. But while water can cool one of these engines, it's never going to do the job for NASA. At shuttle temperatures, most metals would get so hot, they wouldn't just melt, they would vaporize. So the rocket scientists had to take engine cooling to a whole new level. Luckily, NASA already had a great coolant on tap. Inside the giant orange tank is the fuel, super cold liquid hydrogen. At minus 253 degrees Celsius, it is perfect for cooling engines. This is where you see the big fire. Fireball come out the backside. Yeah, this is a bit we've seen on the television. It's at the back. How are we going to cool this 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 bad boy down? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tap off of that uh, liquid hydrogen that's being pumped around through the engine, and we're going to duct it down the side of the nozzle here through these nozzle these uh, distribution tubes. It's going to fill up this manifold, and then it's going to flow back up through 1,080 tubes into the main combustion chamber and burn it. So the actual fuel that you're using is sent along these pipes here, and of all of these, I thought these were just marks. These are actual These tubes are tubes. These are, these are... Which cools this down. Yes. This takes it from the heat of the engine. Correct. And then it goes in and is burned. Correct. Which is one of the secrets to the incredible efficiency, then, of this engine, because you're actually using the fuel before you've burned it. Correct. The reason shuttle engines don't melt is because of a principle first used in an engine like this to drive the bellows on a church organ a cooling system, the removal of heat. The shuttle's fuel cooling system is so efficient, it keeps the engines at a cool 54 degrees Celsius. 
but can all this rocket science help me boil water with a chocolate kettle? To test NASA's system, I've built a radical new prototype. What we have here is something pretty special, because this is a chocolate kettle inspired by NASA. I've gone one better, in fact. This isn't just a chocolate kettle. It's a chocolate ice cream kettle, because that's what that is. Chocolate ice cream. The challenge is to stop my ice cream from melting as the water heats up. Here's how it's working. This is the fuel for the burner down here, liquid propane. It's rushing along this narrow tube here, up here. Just like the shuttle, I'm using freezing cold fuel to do the cooling for me. It then carries its way around here, down here, into the burner. That's the actual fuel I'm using. Because it's staying cool up here, despite this being full of now boiling water, my ice cream is staying frozen. It's NASA, that is. 100 degrees on the inside, below zero on the outside. But it still isn't a perfect. One thing I didn't design in any way of pouring it out. That's refinement. I'll work on that. But... Just like my ice cream, the Space Shuttle main engines don't melt, even though they should be getting really, really hot.